I'd like to welcome now the gentleman who invited us, um, together with his team, all here to Bobcat and Palma 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for the CEO of Dues and Bobcat. Here is Mr. Scott Park. Hello, hello. Yeah? My German is good. Your German is perfect. It's very good. If you have a variant, say servus. Yeah. Like and I can say ya, 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 and then that's 70% of German, right? Oh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry about the rain. We, we have no control over the rain, so it's uh, unfortunately we'll do this inside. But um, the benefit of doing this inside is we want to give you guys a chance to ask questions. So you can ask questions during, after, any time. Okay, and then the, the other thing I wanted to mention is, and maybe you already did, is it's hard to take a picture out there right now. So um, we set aside, what time? 9.30. 9.30 in the morning on Wednesday. If you would like to come, Mike and I will be here, ready hopefully with a beautiful sun to take a picture with our very new product. Perfect. So today I'm here with uh, our Vice President of Product Management and uh, of Bakat EMEA, Mike Vogt. So he's going to be uh, joining with the discussion. Bring it up for Mike, come on. He has his part later, but uh, he was not supposed to come up till we were on the hill. But with the rain, he's available for questions right away. Yeah, so we're really excited about this. You know, um, Bobcat, you know, Bobcat's been around for almost 65 years, and we invented the compact equipment industry. And we continuously try to invent, reinvent, and re-reinvent. So it's all about innovation. And that's what we want to talk a little bit about today. So innovation, as he said, it is in our DNA. And we innovate a lot, right? I mean, this is really part of what we do. Whether it's a function in a machine, or new capabilities, or software products, we do a lot of innovation. But we don't do the innovation just for the sake of innovation. Obviously, we do the innovation to help our customers accomplish more. Yeah. But you know, one of the big things these days is ESG. Everybody knows about ESG. And clearly we are focused on ESG. So our job is also to work on innovations to help the environment, to be able to help not only our customers accomplish more, but also be able to do that in an environmentally friendly way. Yeah. And so, you know, earlier this year, I think a lot of you were surprised, um, the whole industry was surprised when at uh, CES in Las Vegas, we unveiled the T7X, right? This is part of our environmentally focused approach, our ESG for the global community. Because if you remember, the e T7X is an all electric, but does not have any hydraulic fluid in it. So it was something that not only is environmentally friendly, but also in a noise kind of vibration manner. So you will actually see the machine out there, um, but uh, it's a fantastic machine, and it really is part of our whole ESG message. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to talk about all the innovations because you will see that in our booth and you'll be able to uh, hear from our people, but just a couple of things I wanted to mention was about these OLED screens. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but we have two versions of it. One is outside in our telehandler, where basically in on the window itself is a screen. And so we make uh, the boom disappear, and we can put all kinds of different information onto the window, and you can still see through the window. So you should take a, definitely take a look at that. And then if you want to see the more advanced version, there's a sample downstairs, and this one is actually a touch screen. So if you can imagine that on your window, you have a semi-transparent view, so you can see what you're doing, and you can put anything on that screen you want. You can put your what you need to do for work, you can put in your fuel levels and all your gauges, you can put in a video if you want to know how you're supposed to be working, you can put anything on that screen, touch screen, and then go. So please take a look at the two OLED examples we have, one outside on the telehandler, and one inside in our uh, innovation area. Anyway, I, I need to hand over to Mike, but uh, you know, please take a look at all our innovations. You will see some excavators, you'll see some other products out there. Um, we know one thing that I would like to mention is that what we have done in Dusan Bobcat over the last five years is actually more new products 
more new innovations and a complete transformation of what we offer our customers to be able to accomplish more than the whole previous 58 years combined. Well, with that, I think, uh, Mike, if you want to talk a little bit about our latest electric mini excavator, that would be great. Yeah, let's talk about some of our great products. And, uh, I think you said 65 years uh, we've been innovating, and uh, I've been around or had the pleasure to be around for 28 of those years. So, and one thing uh, that is uh, for sure is that, uh, you know, Bobcat is continuously innovating and bringing new solutions to the market for our customers. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, another one uh, that we have. Uh, but before I get into that, maybe just a few words uh, to touch on what Scott was saying. You know, we continue to look always uh, to the future. And uh, I think one thing you can count on with the Bobcat brand is we're always challenging the norms of the industry and we want to continue to grow and expand uh, you know, this compact concept. And when these innovations become commercially um, viable, we bring them to the market. And the T7X that you see out there is available in North America today um, uh, in the market. Now here in Europe, uh, we've also uh, brought new innovations to the market. In 2016 at Bauma, we showed a uh, prototype of the one-ton mini excavator all-electric, and uh, we had a uh, spectacular response uh, from our customers uh, during that event. And in 2019, we made it a reality. So just like the T7X, we took a concept and we brought it to the market, and uh, it was commercially available in uh, 2019, and we've been off and running on our electric vehicle journey since that time. Cool. Now, in between uh, 2019 and today, we've been pretty busy. Um, you've probably seen some of our product launches. We've uh, upgraded or introduced over 65 uh, of our products in our portfolio since that time, including six brand new product lines. Uh, you probably noticed our new grounds maintenance equipment line out front and you'll walk through the stand, you'll see all of our uh, products uh, that have been refreshed over the last three years are on display here. So let's talk a little bit about why we're here today. So uh, we have another addition to our portfolio, so it's the two-ton uh, mini excavator. So why are we continuing to add these machines to our portfolio? It, it's pretty obvious, you see what's going on in the industry and in the market. Um, there's a green economy coming, there's more and more demand all the time for environmentally friendly machines. And uh, we started with the one ton and we're going to continue to grow up through the portfolio and this is uh, another family member to support that. So this machine will have uh, the same capability that its diesel counterpart does, uh, the E19 uh, diesel version. It has more capability than the one ton and it'll allow those customers who have environmentally sensitive applications, who have applications where noise is an issue, um, indoor applications, right, where you don't want the diesel emissions to uh, have another choice um, to complete their jobs. So uh, I think uh, this we're getting to the point where we were supposed to uh, take the cover off, Scott, right? So uh, I think the guys are doing that outside. Um, we'll get to some Q&A here. Uh, also, I would like to note that this product is available to order, so it's commercially ready, and we're accepting orders now, and we'll start shipping the product in uh, January. So, thank you so much, and now it's time to bring up a toast. It's called Mike. Thank you so much to the E19E, to innovation. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Just repeat the question quick. So, what is the situation with telehandlers? Any electric innovations coming up? Coming up there? So, telehandlers. <laughs> so, we're introducing another new uh, addition to our uh, telescopic line. Uh, you see the 2560 outside. Uh, that's the uh, super compact range. Um, it's been a, a needed addition to our portfolio for a long time. It's a fantastic product. We're very excited about it, and. Um, with our Bobcat telescopic range, um, as you know, we build those products in France. They're not uh, branded. And uh, we continue to grow and, and uh, innovate uh, within that space and drive the industry. Um, 
Now, as you know, those are higher, to your question about the electric, right? We are certainly looking at uh, solutions for that. It's more in the innovation stage. They're higher horsepower applications, right? So there's some different solutions that you need to look at, but it's certainly in our roadmap. So conceptually, when we look at our products, we don't look at just the product range, but we look at what we call a product bundle. So what do the customers need to be successful, to accomplish more? And so, as Mike said, we introduced the PF0, which is less than two meters tall and around 180 centimeters wide. So it's the perfect size from what our customers said to be able to get into those smaller applications. So as part of the whole journey, we continue to explore expanding the portfolio for the telehandlers, but also expanding the portfolio for the availability of different um, energy solutions. So we have the diesel solution for sure. We actually do have in our engineering hybrid solution. You saw a few electric machines. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but we acquired the Doosan forklift company last year. And just a couple months ago, we introduced the hydrogen fuel cell based forklift. So all these technologies you can imagine in some way or form will be showing up in our product bundles in other products at some time in the future. But I'm not at a point where I want to share the dates right now. Uh, yeah, the question was uh, the T7X uh, is being manufactured and distributed right now. Is it distributed just by Sunbelt? And the answer is no. Yeah, Sunbelt is a customer. So they, um, we partnered with them. Uh, Sunbelt's ESG message actually included the T7X. I don't know if you look at their quarterly reports. And so before we went into production, before we actually had the final version of our product, they committed to $20 million order of that product. So that's why they ended up being the first and biggest customer. But clearly, as we get more manufacturing capabilities, um, we will do with that product like we do with any product. We will sell it to our, our different dealers and customers out there all over the world. It is available for order by customers now, but we have a, a pretty big backlog. We, we didn't expect um, such an explosion of interest. Um, it not only came from Sunbelt, but it also came from like the California state government. So there was um, too much, a lot more interest than what we had expected. So we're trying to build out that manufacturing uh, platform right now. But yes, you, you, you can make an order, but it will take a long time before you get one. But we'll fix that. Yes. Okay, the question was, what was it about the electrification uh, capabilities that we put in the T7X that attracted Sunbelt? Well, I already mentioned the ESG message, but more important than the ESG message is that this machine has to do work, right? And the work that it can do versus the other T776, yeah, is actually equal or better. So this thing actually had more power and more speed and more capability than our existing product. So the bare minimum, obviously, we say it's equivalent. And clearly, Sunbelt wanted something to the performance of the T7 series, and they got it. And so when it became no hydraulic fluid and fully electric, it goes right along their ESG message. And oh, by the way, the performance is a little better now. So um, all in all, it just kind of fit in just from a, a, a regular work capability perspective, but also with the long-term message. Is the E19 going to be a similar story or a little bit different? Yeah, so the E19 is, um, we're basically replacing the engine with the, um, the battery, uh, but all your other subsystems are still hydraulic, so that's the difference in the D7X. Okay. Well, to the them. E19s uh, will ship in January. Yep. So the answer is yes. Yeah, so the question was, are we planning to get into the larger uh, telehandlers? At the moment, the focus is a little bit more on the smaller range, and you see the, our new introduction. 
Um, it's not to say we haven't looked at it or it's not in our roadmap, but I don't have anything specific for you at the moment. Uh, thank you so much again, ladies and gentlemen, to Scott Park and Mike Vaut for being here, for presenting the E9E, and thanks to all of you for joining us here at the Bobcat Booth. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.